Today we're interviewing artist Thomas Brio about his current project, Art and Sound. Definitely, much like the action painters, I wanted to have, you know, paint being part of the subject matter, part of the message, you know, the energy that a thick brushstroke will invoke in the viewer. Uh, but also there's the audio and visual experience, so, you know, that almost cinematic experience that you get from, from these work. I didn't want to have uh, a particular singular message that the viewer takes away, but many interpretations that they can, you know, discover their own meaning and have a connection to the paintings on their own. Uh, I do know a number of musicians, and uh, I just found that I wanted to create a complete experience to the work, you know. I wanted to have sound involved, you know. Very often, painters like Pollock would uh, be influenced by music, some of the freeform jazz that he was listening to at the time. But I think it was an interesting take to get a musician to interpret paintings rather than an artist being influenced by music. Uh, technique is a big part of it. Um, I think the initial experiment, Seven Second Circus, the piece was called, uh, I wanted to combine as many different styles and techniques of painting as possible into one painting. And after working on that, uh, a lot of the people who saw it, you know, saw some influences best yet and Pollock. Uh, but uh, as the work grew and refined itself in, as part of the body of work, it, uh, it refined itself and became calmer and qu quieter, calmer and quieter. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know, sometimes I'm using a putty knife in, in, in s slapping on the painting. Sometimes I'm splatting it on how Pollock did. Uh, sometimes I'm painting very refinedly, uh, with a, a more realism style. Uh, I'm using a naivete, uh, sort of approach to a lot of the different parts of the painting. And I think all these combinations of style, you really see a, a mashup of styles in music and uh, I think I want to reflect that in the artwork. Well this is a piece called Brain Trails and uh, I think it sort of reflects uh, in some respect, uh, I mean I think the piece would have many different meanings to many different people, but uh, when I was producing it I, I believe it kind of reflects uh, the, the role that popular culture and the effect it has on our brain. Uh, you have this woman's profile, and she's got makeup on, and she's sort of very done up. And, of course, you see these uh, two uh, TVs here, retro-style TVs. And uh, they sort of indicate that she's got in the back of her mind, uh, you know, popular culture and watching TV and having all these messages brought into her and sort of the, the scramble that that sort of creates in her brain. and. I think this piece, to me anyways, sort of reflects uh, how people are so affected by popular culture. You know, they're always wanting to be uh, looking good and feeling good and everything in popular culture really focuses on that. Well, this is a piece called Clear Conscience and I think a large part of the work is uh, the combination of styles. Uh, we have looseness, we have tightness. As you can see here, there's some realism, which is often the focal point in the work. And uh, over here, we have these sort of negative faces that are drawn on purpose in a naive, or painted on purpose in a naive way. Uh, to me, uh, this piece, I think it would have many interpretations, but to me, this piece really does invoke the emotion of guilt and uh, maybe something in her past that she has done that she's feeling guilty about and she's taking that sort of long shower, that long hot shower that I'm sure we've all done and, uh, and just washing away all the negativity of all the bad things that she's gone through. 